first guest tonight is the co-anchor of CBS This Morning, which is celebrating its five-year anniversary, the host of Charlie Rose, which is celebrating 25 years, and a correspondent to 60 Minutes, which has been on the air since the dawn of mankind. Please welcome Charlie Rose. <laughs> Officially, yes, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag here. Is that yeah. this is our Friday show, right? But we taped this Friday show on Thursday, so yes. tonight is officially your birthday. Happy 75th January birthday, January 5th. Thank you, thank you. It should be a national. It should be a national <laughs> holiday, <laughs> Charlie Rose. I'm for that. But if it was a national holiday, you wouldn't take it off because you never stop working. You work harder than anyone I know. I work hard because I love what I do. Mm-hmm. Well, now, so do you. I, I do enjoy yeah. what I do, but I only do one show <laughs> <laughs> at a time. Well, maybe that's a good idea. It Just might be. reduce it down to one show. Did you really grow up uh, working at a general store? I did. My parents in Henderson, North Carolina, had a general store. That's the most American thing you it could is. have, right? It, it is. Either it. Or a bald eagle factory. <laughs> that really... <laughs> Not really only that, my father children. believed in the work ethic, so he made me start working when I was about six years old. I would get up in the morning, and I'd go down, and I'd put stuff on the front of the store. Like so, what? Well, like feed and seed and things like that. Wow. It was great. You're a storybook. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, a so I, I assume you're not having a huge party tonight, because I oh, would no. I would have been invited, right? You would have been. The yeah. invitation didn't get to you? Didn't get to me, Damn Charlie. It. The internet does it every time. It's no. the Russians. They have <laughs> the my Russians invitation. Have my email. Damn you, Damn. Putin! Damn you! Yeah. And you were gonna love it. I bet. Can I come? Can I just come with you? Yeah, of course. Can we leave here. To, to, I'll just to go us. with you. Yes. What do you? What like? I know I, you have big plans tonight because you had oh, big yeah. plans this morning. You uh, this morning. I noticed on uh, CBS this morning. This morning, yeah. Um, uh, which I said is celebrating five years. Congratulations. Oh boy, it's great. great run, my uh, my co-anchors, Nora O'Donnell, and Gail, Gail King. King. Love both it. friends of the show. Uh, you got a very special little song uh, sung to you by Rita Moreno. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Charlie Rose. Ooh. Hey, you're too cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. The, um, I gotta say, though... <laughs> <laughs> you really, really seem to know your way around a lap dance, Charlie Oh, Rose. yes. <laughs> lap dancing with an 85-year-old who's brilliant, mm -hmm. a great singer, and a remarkable woman. Mm -hmm. Rita Moreno. But she's, she's an EGOT. She's an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. She, oh, really? She's got all that? You didn't know that? No. I informed Charlie Rose about something <laughs> just now. <laughs> I'm going to hang um, out with you. How was your 2016? Happy New Year. It was a good year. I mean, you mentioned uh, CBS this morning. We've had a really good year, mm -hmm. gaining audience. Uh, your guy was a creator of CBS this yeah, morning. Yeah, my executive producer is yeah. the creator Chris of CBS Lee. this morning. Chris Licht right over there. And there, he always uh, sits over yeah. there so he can watch everything. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it, but it's been a great year. We we're up 42% from the time we began. You know, we hope that uh, it'll continue to grow. We're trying to make it better every day. Mm -hmm. I'd try that. If I'd we had you that. in every... every day, that's a fantastic <laughs> idea. How come you don't have us do that over here, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said he was going to go over here and make you better. That's what he said to me when he left. He tries to keep putting me in tights. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to dress me up like the way the, the way you dress up. This is you. This is you yeah. with Nora and Gail. Yeah. Wearing tennis shoes. Versace pants. And Versace pants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was because. Are you, are you wearing tennis oh, shoes yeah. tonight. You know, I say if it makes you comfortable, do it. That's my motto. If it makes you comfortable, do it. Well, it seems to work for you. It did. It seems to work for you. Now, uh, you, though you though you are seventy five. Yes, sir. And I would just. I, I feel better this. than I've ever felt in my life. Really? Yeah. I'm really looking do. forward. So I'm at fifty two. I should look forward to seventy five. Look forward to it. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm trying to, to be this because I've never I never had this before. Town and Country just named you. Uh, one of the top bachelors <laughs> of 2017. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, I can't, uh huh. I, I, uh, yeah. No. That, yeah. No. It's official. It's official. That's inexplicable to me. Mm -hmm. Are you sexier in the town or the country, <laughs> Charlie? I imagine country. the country. Country. The country boy. Oh yeah, country boy. All right. Uh, we're two weeks away from from uh, the inauguration of Donald Trump. Um. You're famously curious about everything in the world. What are you most curious about uh, 
in the Trump administration? What, what interests you most about what will happen? I just think it's be interesting to see when he goes to office. I mean, every president will tell you there's nothing that really prepares you. And once you're in the Oval Office, it's a sobering experience, knowing what you're responsible for and knowing that your finger is on the nuclear button. What, what's it like to be in his office? Because uh, after the election, Trump, uh, president-elect, famously called um, anchors, heads of news, news oh boy, bureaus, yeah. into his conference room in Trump Tower and dressed them down. Were you there? I was there. Okay. And what was that, that. like? Did I well, mean, did he watch him chew out news people? Well, he talked specifically, as it is reported, to CNN and, and others. Uh, How about CBS? Did he tear he into CBS? He didn't say much about CBS. He didn't. He didn't, no. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Does he, he like us? Does he like us? <laughs> <laughs> I just want well, to know whether the well, president-elect so, likes the network that I work for. Uh, I don't know. Did he talk about me at all? No, he didn't mention you. <laughs> he did not. Uh, right. But you are like me. You haven't had him on your program, have you? I have, yeah. Oh, you've had him here. You haven't had him on your program? No. Oh, you got to get him sometime. Oh, is he good? Uh, is he a good interview? <laughs> you've, you've interviewed him, sur surely, <laughs> well, on one of your ago, shows. A long time ago, though. Oh, on, on CTM, I have. Yeah. And I interviewed him one night when I was anchoring the evening news for Scott mm -hmm. Pelley. Yeah, no, I've, I've interviewed him. Yeah. He was very different in person than what you yes. see what you see on television. Charming and what would you say? I would say he's very different in that he is reasonable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in on the campaign on trail, TV, I think he made made his bones but, but, by being inflammatory. But in person, I he's a, just a guy. I have a theory about that. I mean, I think making his bones was what he decided he had to do. I think to be disruptive was his campaign strategy mm -hmm. because he thought the people that uh, were tired of Washington wanted to see a different kind of person. And he defined that as being disruptive, mm -hmm. uh, somebody who, who, somebody chaotic who would uh, disrupt and be chaotic, and in fact would challenge everybody, would show that he had no fear of anybody and attacking them. Do and you imagine that. that will continue though? Because don't we want steady leadership in the White House? I mean, I, I hope well, it we doesn't, can, yeah. because it, it, I think it's 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 best for everyone. It's better for world peace and for business if you have some expectation of what's well, going to happen well, tomorrow. Well, and and the way he kept people well, off the balance was not letting you know what he'd be like tomorrow. Obviously, predictability and some, some sense of certainty about the way the other person will behave is an important part of diplomacy. On the other hand, there are those who argue that, that a little bit of unpredictability is probably a good thing so they don't take you for granted. Now, I think the most important point is that, you know, he's going to walk into the Oval Office and no matter what he is hearing and doing today, it's going to be different. It's all on his hands then. And the question is, nobody can do this job alone, but in the end, you have to make the decisions as president. Um, we've got to take a commercial break right now. We'll be right back with more Charlie Rose.